Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the stock market update video. And it's been a super busy day, so I cannot record right after the market closed, but let's get started. So we'll be looking at QQQ, S&P 500, as well as Tesla, Nvidia, Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Meta. And we'll be looking at their support reason levels, and as well as why uh, today the market bounced. And so yesterday I was talking about um, there was a lot of head, uh, inverse head and shoulders on the hourly charts and the four hour chart on a lot of the mega cap tax stocks and that were likely due for a bounce and so fear and greed index yesterday was at 25 so we were we were at extreme fear so this only helps when we're at extreme fear or extreme greed because when it's close to neutral we, it doesn't help us that much so when it was extreme fear we'll start to look for clues in the market potentially give us a temporary bounce and because market doesn't just drop straight in a straight line or straight up as well is always weight goes in waves so when you have extreme fear um also coinciding with ai sentiment data give me a second so websites down so ai sentiment data at 40 percent bearish uh, this week and it's a good time to cover your shorts and start to look for longs for temporary bounce it doesn't mean that we're gonna go all the way like up to here for qq right but at least we'll have some, some form of bounce and we'll see how much this bounces, um, the size of this bounce, right? If we bounce over 50% of this move, then the next lucky scenario of that is we're going to have a daily uptrend. But if we only bounce, let's say 30%, right? We're still in the bear flag territory, even with the bounce. So we'll have to see how this bounce ends up shaping up. And then uh, Fed hike, we're still having a hold for the rest of the year. I think this is a glitch because it doesn't even make sense if we have a hike next year in May and then just cuts the next month. And so, yeah, it does not make sense at all. That's two cuts, actually. So we'll be at one hike and then cuts 50 basis point the next month. So I'm pretty sure this is a glitch. So this 55% is supposed to be at this um, hold zone. So that's why we have a great hold for the rest of the um, into May, as well as... Um, Jerome was talking today after hours uh, around 1 p.m. PST, so it's 4 p.m. EST, and it was nothing. Nothing happened. He was talking about more so um, like just questions, like college questions or something. I don't remember, but there was nothing on the economics about rate hikes or anything like that. So it was a nothing event for us. And let's take a look at the trade review. So yesterday I, in my video, said that I'm going to, I added um, XOXL on Wednesday, so 17.3. I also added during um, 17.8 as well. Let me take a look at my. So you guys can come join the Discord if you want. Everything's free. Um, I sometimes post some trades. So I added um, XOXL here as well as yesterday, 17.3. So my average was quite low. And Essentially, we had a pretty big move today um, to 19.2. So that was a close to a, let me do that real quick. I don't remember. Let's just say it's close to a 10% gain from 17.3 or something. 17.3. Let me draw that real quick. 17.3. Let's just go 17.5 because my average was close to around there. That eleven percent, I sold a little bit in the nineteens. You can see in the comments, someone asked me where my target was on yesterday's video, and I said at least the nineteen. So I sold a little bit, and then I added them back because so I sold it close to here. I think it nailed the top, but um, I added back because we back tested um, after this drop. We back tested the support of prior resistance. So prior resistance over here back tested now acting as support and we bounce off of that so my idea is that if we broke through the support then i'm all out but um we back tested it i added we added back from position where i sold up here and then i still back to a full position because and then we bounce so i'm just holding it into tomorrow and we'll see if we're if we can to bounce tomorrow or not and yeah there's a couple plays going on labu is a biotech play it's d3x long leverage for xbi you can see it's also forming a pottering pattern as well. And I like to see this daily low, uh, higher low being set. 
and as come from a daily uptrend to say this is potentially a good um, autumn here after this drop. There's just the biotech small cap sector. And then we have the XXI, which is the um, Chinese sector in Hong Kong. It's also potentially may bounce here. This one's a little bit harder to play, a lot harder to play because it, it just gaps overnight and and uh, you don't have really control in it. So I wouldn't suggest playing this one unless you have extra cash or capital because um, the entire move just happens during overnight in, in overseas, right? And the next thing you know, you wake up, you could be gapped up one uh, percent, three to three percent, or gap down one to three percent, right? But uh, but the Chinese name quite be damp, been down. You can see we have three supports here, three touches here, and this may potentially bounce as well. And it's been beating down for let's say three years already, so we may get a run from October to January, and you would have about. I say first target would be close to this black line. Here's eight percent. Next target eleven, and then twenty one. So that, that all depends. Like nobody's gonna know where he's gonna head to, but um, manage your risk and diverse in a couple of trades that I just showed you guys. And I added yin, which is the three x long leverage for this XXI trade. So if XXI bounces ten percent, this will go up thirty percent. Let's do this real quick. Yeah. So those are the three I'm looking at at the moment. XLXL is my biggest position because I like to trade the US. Um, larger names better. This is like similar to QQ. If QQ bounces, XLXL is going to bounce. The reason I added XLXL is because QQQ on yesterday. Uh, was only up 2.3% while XOXL was holding. Let's see, let's see here. XOXL was actually up 0.88%. So it was relatively outperforming QQQ. And the thesis was if QQQ bounces just slightly, XOXX was just going to bounce a lot more. This is the 1X for uh, XOXL, which is the 3X long side. When XOXX bounces 1%, um, XOXXL is up 3%. So we bounce from my entry, we bounce close to like 3.4%. So you times that by three, it's roughly 10 and a half. Should be more than that. But sometimes that leverage, yeah, four ish. So yeah, 11% for me on the long side. And we'll see if this pivot holds and then continues tomorrow. You can see. QQ come from the inverse head and shoulders. Inverse head and shoulders psychology of it. it's a downtrend into an uptrend. Once we broke this neckline here, you can see that volume coming in, that um, big green candle here. Also back tested. See, we back tested the 357 uh, resistance and prior support here. Back this is so far slightly bouncing off of it. So we'll see if we get more follow through tomorrow. That was the idea. Um, of re adding it back. But yeah, we'll see if. Um, so, hourly uptrend confirm. You guys know where I talked about it yesterday on the video saying I want to see an hourly uptrend confirm to potentially say marking the temporary bottom here. And we have a lot more confidence saying this could be the temporary bottom of this drop overall. And now we zoom out to the daily time frame to see if we can negate uh, this daily bear flag here. Did we negate it? Let's see. Okay, we are above 0.382, but we didn't close above it. Yeah, so I'd like to see us close above um, 0.382, and um, we'll see if we can break above that and see if we can fill this gap on KQQ. Still a, so far, still a weak bounce, so I want to see more follow through from that bounce as well. All right, let's take a look at SPY here. SPY. SPY had that similar look on the hourly. You can see this inverse head and shoulders right here. And then we confirmed it. Right. Low. We broke above here. Back test it again. As well, you can see we broke above it, came back test bounce off it so far. So it would be a red flag if we break below this tomorrow and then come back down to here. Um, 
So yeah, we'll see tomorrow is the end of the quarter as well as end of the week. So there'll be a lot of rebalancing going on. So make sure to watch out for that. And if we do bounce, we'll also look at the size of the bounce. Let's see if SPY is still in bear flag. Yep, SPY is still in bear flag territory below 0 0.382. So on the next tomorrow and then early next week, it's going to be pretty key for me on the size of this bounce because if we get a big enough bounce, then bulls have chances to now shape up daily uptrends back to their favor for a bigger bounce than just a uh, just a daily lower high, meaning the high of the bounce is going to be lower than the prior high to pivot, right? So we don't want that as a bull, of course, but so we'll see. Size of the bounce is going to be very important. And yeah, if they're weak bounce, then bears may have more room on a downside, but we'll see about that. Tesla, 2.224%. So decent day. Yesterday pretty much came into, uh, I talked about where we came into this cluster of volume here. It's going to act as support. And we pretty much close above it. So that's a good sign where it did act as support. And bulls by defense down here when we came into this zone. And um, they play offense. So that's exactly what bulls want to see. Um, hitting that zone, bounce from it. Have the inverse head and shoulders look as well and confirmed it. Same thing. Get that big at, big green candle. And it's testing the high of its day right now in after hours. So we'll see if it can break this level as well. Some level of resistance there. Being better than its peers. NVIDIA looking good. So it's been relative weak on this drop overall for compared to the market. But once we started to form a higher low over here, meaning the low of the candle, every candle on the low is higher than the previous low. That's a good sign. That means um, they're buyers at those levels. And same thing once we form that hourly uptrend. So far, bulls didn't look back and um, broke above this triple top resistance at 425 today. Follow through, back tested it, bounced. Good sign so far. Let's see if we get more follow through tomorrow. There's no way I talk about when you back test is good. It's a good time to add as well. And if you have a clear level to play off of, if we back tested and it failed, you get stopped out for just a little bit. And but it bounces, we'll get more follow through. So there's a lot of plays today where you can back test it if you didn't add it yesterday um, on that back test. So surprisingly, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon barely bounced today. And market has a decent bounce. So bears can argue that um, if Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple stays weak, then QQQ may roll over again. But bulls can argue that these three hasn't even barely bounced today, and we already have a decent bounce on the market. So if Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon just bounces slightly again tomorrow, not again, I mean slightly catches up to the other bulls of the big techs, then we might get an even bigger bounce. So there's arguments on both sides from that. So we'll have to take a look to see if Apple is going to bounce tomorrow or not. Um, we did came pretty close to this 167 support, which is um, this zone right here. And it's hourly. OK, so hourly, um, no hourly uptrend yet for Apple. We made a new low here versus where every other stock um, didn't make a new low and made that inverse head and shoulders, made a higher low, and then formed the hourly uptrend. But Apple made a new low here. Apple's is only have one initial move, now big enough bounce, where it now forms a pivot here, right? So if we do break today's high on the Apple, then we have hourly uptrend confirmed. So that's what I want to see for Apple bulls to break today's high and confirm an hourly uptrend, potentially have a bigger bounce back to this looking uh, edge resistance. So this was acting as support right before. We come up to this and act as resistance. And then you can see all the cluster of volume here as well. So those are all going to act as resistance. So we'll have to see if um, high apple shapes up there. When we come back up to it, we're about 2.4% away. So yeah, key for me, hourly uptrend back to apple for, for that bounce and may potentially help the market as well. Same thing with Amazon. You can see Amazon made a new low here versus other tech stocks like Tesla and Nvidia. And 
it's also shaping up a head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulders here now. A little bit lagging behind the other peers since all these peers already confirmed it today. Um, we'll see if, if Amazon can break about today's high to form the hourly uptrend as well. Or pull back a little bit slightly from the inverse head and shoulders and then break above. Idea is a downtrend to an uptrend. But uh, it did keep it pretty much, yeah. I mean, like, I, it'd be hard for Amazon not to bounce today. 15% straight down into um, this cluster of support here. Yeah. Pretty much close back above 125. If I had to bet my money on if Amazon is going to go up or down tomorrow, I'm just going to bet up uh, just because. Uh, yeah, even uh, even if it drops in again tomorrow, I'm pretty sure it will end up somewhere above today's price at some time next week. But uh, yeah, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft needs to catch up. And now I can see Google already confirmed its in red and shoulders today. See level broke above, and now back to bounce. So it looks like QQQ. So you can see its peers are doing a lot better. So as long as um, Google, Tesla, NVIDIA, and Meta continues tomorrow, it will probably help Microsoft, Amazon, and Apple form its hourly uptrend. And when they form their hourly uptrend, they will have a bigger move once it happens. Then they will, in turn, fuel QQQ even more. So we'll see if that happens. Um, obviously, if Google, NVIDIA, Tesla tomorrow decides to come back, roll over a little bit to back test this zone, and it might then Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft might not get that bounce going, right? And so we, let's take a look at, see, Microsoft here. Pretty much made it slightly a new low, but let's just call it a triple bottom. This is a $300 stock. We just went like to 10 cents lower. Actually, not about 20 cent, 20 cent lower. So we'll call this triple bottom. So no hourly uptrends yet. So this is a big enough move, pull back, back test. Now I want to see break above today's high as well and break above 315. So yeah, as, as, a, as a bull, you can say, you know, Microsoft's holding pretty darn good here. And even though the bears are playing defense here and not letting it go above 315, right? Um, bulls aren't letting it go below 310 either. So, and my, my, the market has decent bounce today and probably get some follow through tomorrow. So. If you're a bear, they probably are, are thinking about covering or if they didn't cover it today already. All right, so we get this bounce here, come from early uptrend, and you get going. And we have Meta. So yesterday I drew this downtrending resistance. I know there's a lot of lines here, but you can see this one, very clear, resistance, resistance, resistance. Resistance four times from that that uh, their VR event yesterday, just straight four percent down, four percent up, and back test it again. And uh, you know, even with even with a news event, you can see technicals pretty much aligned exactly on this resistance. But uh, we bounce back above those support, broke above it right away this morning, and you can see the bull volume coming in as well. So that bulls are looking good, and. So now we're looking at this maroon line. This one right here, it's from this and from 52 e high. Let's see it from this place all the way down here. But we will see if Meta can of that. Meta also already has an hourly uptrend, already confirmed. Stronger than its peers. And back does this 303, also bounce up as well. I'm looking at this 307. If we break this, we're coming back up to 310. This 310 and 313 zone. Also, quite a bit of resistance there. Megaphone. I don't know if we're going to get in play again. We are 7% away from this megaphone top. You can see all this times we tested here. But it just gets too wide later on, and the pattern gets negated. But we'll see. It's maybe like a slight rejection. You know, if we come out of here, it's a little bit pullback or something like that. No big deal, but we'll see when it comes 7% away. It's quite a bit. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I probably won't have time for natural gas, but I'll update you guys on Saturday if I don't have time today. Um, yeah, have a good rest of you guys' day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.